Good day. Welcome to Kimmer's Everything. We have the Orange Pi 800 personal computer kit, and these sell for between 100 and 200 bucks, depends on where you get them from. Uh, you can get it from AliExpress or Amazon. There's different versions of this. Uh, this one I bought uh, was like maybe $108. Had the power supply. And I recommend getting one with the power supply. It's a 4 amp power supply, 4 amp USB C power supply. So if you don't have 4 amp power supply, you just plug a USB C one in. It's probably not going to work very well. It'll be kind of crashier. Maybe even not boot up. But it's a really nice unit. And I'm going to say that if you want a Raspberry Pi 400, just pay the money. Buy it because you'll be happy with it. This is not a Raspberry Pi. So the operating systems that run on the Raspberry Pi, those images are not going to work on here. And there's a lot less support on this fellow. But I bought it because it's like 100 bucks. Couldn't beat it. It's all in one computer. Really nice computer. It looks just like the Raspberry Pi 400. Of course, it has the orange, orange on there. And it is orange on the back. It has some nice ports. It has couple USBs, Ethernet, uh, SD card, full HDMI, which I really like, VGA, which I really like, so you can have two different monitors. And of course, the GPO, O-pins, and a little shorter than, I think they cut off some of them that are on the Raspberry Pi, so you're not going to be able to just plug in uh, like a hat that you might on some of the Raspberry Pi, and of course, the USB-C, and a built-in speaker. So pretty cool. Nice little keyboard. Nice little all-in-one computer for 100 bucks. You really can't go wrong. This came with, uh, it's like a Ubuntu version of the Raspberry, or the Orange Pi OS. But I bought this because it said, oh, it's going to have the Android Orange Pi OS. And you have to install that, of course, yourself because it didn't come on here. And it's not clear how to do that. I tried different ways, tried flashing the image, which you can just you can download the image, which came out, like, I think, the end of November 2022. And I tried and tried and tried. And then finally, I found they actually have instructions on there. Found the instructions, which are not very clear because there's, uh, there's two tricks. Two tricks. And we're going to show you how to do this. You need... Of course, your little SD card. Let's see, where's the SD card at? Oh, here he is. Your SD card. And if you just put in your SD card, which has to be about 8 gig or so, and a fast one, it's not going to detect the software that they're using to flash the Android image onto the card. You can I try different cards, and it would never detect this. But it would detect the USB drive. And if you read the instructions, it plug your USB drive in. And the reason I found that out is because I had a USB drive in there, and it kept finding the USB drive, but not the SD card. So I got me a USB to SD card reader, plugged it in, and guess what? Instantly problem solved. Uh, the other little trick you're going to have to learn, and you may hear a name, and I've used the instructions that kind of shows you on their, on their software, which is in Chinese. It shows you click here, click here, click here. I like to be able to read it. There's an INI file for their software, and you change the main language to English. Guess what? You can read it. And the software actually does some other cool, cool little tricks, which we're not really going to go into, but at least you can read and see what you're doing. So that's the two little tricks. I will show you them here in a second. So let's go to the computer, and we're going to flash the image on here. And I'll show you where you download it from, put it on here. And it's a pretty simple process. Flash it, jam it in in the back, boot it up, let it install, and you're running. And then you have all the Amazon or the, um, the Google apps from the Play Store. And so you will need a Play login, a Google Play login, so you can create one or use your own. And I've installed like Amazon, Facebook. Uh, let's see, what else do we do? Oh, some Office apps, different things, Freebie, those kind of things. And I did stream some video on it, and it performed well. I mean, it, for what it is, uh, if you like Android, you're probably gonna like doing that. I think if you're gonna use Android as a, you know, a main desktop, you're gonna kind of be a little disappointed because it's more for phones, and it works fine, plays fine. Kind of neat to look at, but I kind of prefer the Ubuntu uh, version or any one of the Linuxy versions. Because it's got more apps, more fun stuff. It's more desktop-y. But uh, all in all, the Android 12 that you can get from the Orange Pi OS works well. Like I said, all the apps work. The store works. I didn't have any problems with it. So let's go to the computer. Now let's go to the computer and install it. Okay, go to orangepi.org. And we're going to download the tools to install and the operating system. And so find the Orange Pi 800. There it is. And... There's a little download over here to download. And there's three things you're probably going to want. You're going to want the Orange Pi OS Droid, the user manual, good to read because it shows you how to do some installs on Linux and Android, and the official tools, very critical. So down, download the OS, which is uh, it's actually on a Google Drive, kind of strange. And it's about 2 gig. And the download the manual if you want that. I suggest you get that and see the manual there. And then the official tools, very critical. And if you want the Android tool. So let those download. They'll be in a zip file, so you want to unzip them. And then one thing you want to do, you put in your SD card. You're going to format it. Make sure you format the card first in FAT. 
and I'm just going to use the SD uh, formatter tool. Uh, you can download up that off the internet. You can format it with anything you like, though. Yeah. I'm just going to do a quick format. And there it goes. Got to plug it in, I guess. And go. There we go. You can see there's already some stuff on there. I'm just going to format it. And away we go. And then next, go into the tools that you downloaded, the SD Disk tool. That's the tool you use to write the image. And I already ex extract it. There it is. And if you look, there's a config.ini file. Open that up, and you'll see by default, the default language is Chinese. I already changed it to English. But see, I put English in here, english.ini. I changed it from Chinese to English. Otherwise, it's going to be in Chinese. <clears throat> you can see it detected the USB drive. And like I said, this has to be the USB SD card reader. You can't just plug an SD card reader into your computer. You're going to select your image, and then you're going to write it. Pretty easy. And that's basically it. And we'll kind of just fast forward through this a little bit. It takes maybe about five minutes or so to write it, depending on your card. But like I said, make sure you have a USB uh SD card reader, and otherwise it just doesn't detect it, which is kind of strange. You would think it would be able to detect SD card in your laptop or computer, but at least for me it did not. So I actually spent quite a bit of time trying to figure that out. It's like, why won't it read my SD card? I tried different SD cards, just no go. And also changed the config.ini, and you can see it's completed. And basically all you do, uh, go to your Orange Pi, plug it in, boot it up, and it starts installing the image. Pretty simple. This took maybe 15 minutes or so. It took a little while, but not too bad. It's a typical uh, Android install. If you ever had an Android phone and upgraded it uh, to a different OS, you get the little spinning circles. And this is actually, actually Android 12, so it's very current. Very nice. And this, I think, is release 1.00, so it must be the initial release. But I didn't find any flaws with it. So let's let that finish up, and away we go. It's almost done, almost done, and we're done. And when it gets to this point here, uh, you just take out your SD card, and it boots up. And you can see I just opened up a couple apps. Actually, I already installed a few things. Uh, Google Play Store works fine. Let's see. Let's try the Internet. I think this would be great just like on a TV set because the, the screen is pretty big and I changed the resolution as high as I could. And you can see it's still quite large. Just, you gotta remember Android's made for tablets and cell phones, that kind of thing. So as a desktop, uh, is it okay? Yeah, it works. It is awkward uh, the way you do flip between windows and stuff like that. And some of the, the, the windows have a little X in the right-hand corner to close things. doesn't always work. But you can see uh, YouTube works fine. Trying to get to my website. Let's see what's going on here. And I already connected to the Wi-Fi. You can do it through the Ethernet port, whichever way you want. Oh, there it is. So that all works great. And we'll start a little video really quick. And what you want to do is go into settings. You can change the sound to come out your HDMI port. You can see there's a nice TikTok ad. Very nice of them. Here's a video I did. That all works fine. I did put other apps on there. I put some Office stuff. I put, uh, what else did I put? I think I put Amazon. A few other things on here. Just to do some quick testing. But it's really nice that the Play Store just works. Very simple. Of course, you have to have a Google account. It's nice and nice and quick. There's the Play Store. See, so I'm already logged in. So that's fine. If you like Android, you're going to like this because this is what it is. Like this will make a very nice desktop for Android. You know, put on Google Earth, and that works fine. Get a little lagging occasionally, nothing terrible. I do like that it's a six-core processor, so that kind of sure helps quite a bit. But all in all, very very nice. Let's kind of zoom in. Let's go to Australia.
kind of a nice nice little PC alternative to the Raspberry Pi 400. Uh, but like I said in the, earlier, if you want a Raspberry Pi 400, buy a Raspberry Pi 400. But all in all, I think this is very, very nice. Works well. There's the Orange Pi. There you have it. Orange Pi 800. Like I said, just a little, little over 100 bucks for one with the power supply. Not a bad deal. I think it's a really good, fun little computer. If you're looking for a Raspberry Pi, buy the Raspberry Pi. Buy the Raspberry Pi 400. Don't get this because I think you'll be kind of upset. There's not as much support, not as many operating systems uh, tweaked for this guy. If you just want something fun to play with and you like the color orange, that's the way to go. They are scalping big time the Orange Pi or the Raspberry Pi 400s. And that's kind of one of the things that I think are going to lead a lot of people to this because it's it's a lot cheaper and it's not being scalped and you can get it right away. So all in all, I think a great little fun computer and I've been playing with it for quite a bit now. And you could use this as your main desktop if you want to do, you know, internet, office, those kind of things. And, and same with the, with the uh, Android operating system for this, which is, I think, really cool. Work, looks great, works great. Uh, I think that would be more for if you just want to have it hooked to your TV, you know, stream Amazon, those kind of things, and have a keyboard. So pretty cool. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video and found it useful. That's you guys. Have a great day.